Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it's Kyle here one more time for the program today, the advanced portion of today's class in the 4.0 course. Today we're looking at class number 192. Yeah, just a few more classes left. Time flies. We say time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? And, uh, well, I think it's been good. I think we've covered an incredible amount of material here on the course. Now, it's not over yet. We have a few days left, so I'm not going to start saying goodbye or anything like that, but here we are in class number 192, and we'll start with a little review where we were looking at uh, yesterday. Puede que haya habido. There may have been. There may have been an election in Canada last week, but I can't remember. Or, I don't know, but I'm not sure. Or, no hubo en absoluto. There definitely wasn't. There definitely wasn't. So, are you sure? that there wasn't a traffic accident on your street last week. A traffic accident. There may have been, puede que haya habido, there may have been a traffic accident on my street, but I don't know. There may have been. Okay. Um, are you sure that there wasn't a professional baseball player in my house last night? How sh now, how would you know? You, you have to say, I don't know, Kyle. There may have been, puede que haya habido, there may have been a professional baseball player in your house, Kyle, but I don't know. All right. Was there football on television last night? Yeah, yeah, there was. There definitely was. There definitely was. Mm -hmm. Was there a fire in your house last night? No, there definitely wasn't a fire in my house. No hubo en absoluto. There definitely wasn't a fire in my house last night. What about my house? Was there a fire in my house? There may have been a fire in your house, Kyle, but I don't know. Unless you were there, you wouldn't know. Okay. Uh, was there a tornado in Madrid yesterday? No, there definitely wasn't. There definitely wasn't a tornado in Madrid last week. Was there a tornado in, hmm, in Nebraska last month? Well, there may have been a tornado, but I don't know. There may have been a tornado. Great giri pronunciation, right? Tornado. <laughs> Not tornado. Was there a tornado in Toledo, Ohio? Toledo, Ohio. Not Toledo, but Toledo, Ohio. Named after Toledo, but we say Toledo. Was there a tornado in Toledo, Ohio last month? There may have been a tor... A to uh, pff, excuse me. It's a tongue twister, it seems. There may have been a tornado in Toledo, Ohio last month. But I don't know. Puede que haya habido. There may have been. Hmm. Okay. Was there... Hmm, let me think of one more. Was there a volcanic eruption in Barcelona last week? No, Kyle. There definitely wasn't a volcanic eruption in Barcelona last week. No, there definitely wasn't. Okay. Now, if we wanted to make that plural, we could say there definitely weren't any volcanic eruptions last month in Barcelona. Were there any? No, there weren't. There definitely weren't any. Okay, now, now the next examples that we looked at, we looked at um, basically the same, but here with there may be, puede que haya, and there definitely isn't. So, definitely isn't or definitely aren't. Seguro que no hay. So, uh, for example, are there any igloos in Valencia? No, there definitely aren't any igloos. In Valencia, there definitely aren't any igloos. Is there an igloo, un igloo, 
is there an igloo in San Sebastian? No, there isn't. There definitely isn't an igloo in San Sebastian. I've noticed here that I, and people tell me this all the time, they say, Kyle, you're always talking about Eskimos and igloos. Well, yeah, I know, but I like Eskimos and I like igloos, so it's my style. I also talk about Canada a lot. Are there any bears in Canada? Yes. There are definitely bears in Canada. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are there as many bears in Spain as there are in Canada? No. There definitely aren't as many bears in Spain as there are in Canada. Hmm. Uh, are there any Spanish people in the studio today? There may be some Spanish people in the studio today, but I don't know, Kyle. Right? You wouldn't know unless you were here with me. Well, yeah, there are, there are two Spanish people, in fact. There's uh, our technician, Manu, and I think, his, I think his girlfriend is in the studio at the moment. But uh, they're, they're not in the room with me. They're in the booth, the sound booth. And there's also an American, Drew Crosby. He's in the studio at the moment, working on his program. Mm -hmm. Are there any criminals in my family? Do you know? Are there any criminals in my family? I don't know, Kyle. There may be criminals in your family, but I don't know. Okay. Is there a statue of me in Canada? Well, there may be a statue of you in Canada, Kyle, but I don't know. No, 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 I'll tell you for sure. There, aren't. There, de there, there isn't a statue. There definitely isn't a statue of me in Canada. Hmm, okay. Um, ooh, is there a five-star hotel? A five-star hotel in my hometown. My hometown, which is Liverpool, Nova Scotia, Canada, on the East Coast. Beautiful town. But, well, what, what can you say? Is there a five-star hotel there? You don't know. So you can say, puede que haya. There may be. There may be a five-star hotel there, but I don't know. There may be a five-star hotel in your hometown, Kyle, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Is there a book on the table in front of me right now? Well, there may be a book on the table in front of you, Kyle, but I don't know. There may be. Now, is there a tiger in this room? Is there a tiger? That would be, that would be way too dangerous, so no. No, Kyle, there definitely isn't a tiger in that room, in the studio. There definitely isn't a tiger. I promise you, there definitely isn't a tiger, yeah. I refuse to work if there are tigers in the studio. It's one of my working conditions, I said. I'm not going to work if there's a tiger in the studio. So, yeah, no, there, there, there definitely isn't a tiger in the studio today. Seguro que no hay. All right, let's move on, shall we? Should we, should we just move on and, and take a look at something else? That sounds like a good idea. Let's move on. Expression of the day. Ah, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the expression of the day. Our expression of the day today is to throw in the towel. Tirar la toalla. You say to throw in the towel. You say it in Spanish as well. To throw in the towel, essentially to quit. To give up. Give up is a phrasal verb we can use. To give up. To give up, to quit. To throw in the towel. Now, to throw in the towel, this, this comes from boxing, right? You have two guys boxing, and the manager, or the trainer, I suppose, is on the outside, and he, he always has a towel there because between rounds, the boxer sits down, and the trainer comes up and dries the sweat a little bit with a towel, gives him some water, and so on. But uh, if that boxer is losing badly, and the trainer thinks that the boxer's health is at risk. He's going to get beaten. He's getting, he's getting hurt really bad in there. The, the trainer will throw the towel into the ring, the white towel. And when that towel hits the ring, the referee will stop the match. Because the trainer has just thrown in the towel. He has basically said, we give up. My boxer quits. He gives up because he's being defeated. So to throw in the towel is to quit. Tirar la toalla. 
You say the same thing in Spanish, but it's nice to know the origin of that expression, to throw in the towel. All right, now as we move into class number 192, we see the passive voice. Yes, the passive voice. A little review here. And when do we use this thing? When do we use this passive voice? It's an interesting structure. It's a good structure to know. Because using the passive voice, being aware of the passive voice, and being able to use it with agility will, you, will allow you to persuade much better, to communicate more clearly, to deliver the message from the angle that you want to use to deliver your message. So the passive voice is all about emphasizing the subject. Here, the subject that receives the verb. So you may want to do this if one subject is more important. Well, if well, you, you, you want to place emphasis on the subject. That's one of the uses. For example, uh, who, who shot Kennedy? Do you remember who shot Kennedy? Now, it was Oswald. Oswald shot Kennedy, but not a lot of people... Well, historically, Kennedy is much more important than Oswald. So the newspaper headlines would say, Kennedy was shot by Oswald. But not Oswald shot Kennedy. No, the, the subject, we want the subject to be Kennedy. In this case, if we want the subject to be Kennedy, and we're talking about the shooting that he received, the subject is receiving the verb, receiving the action. So in this case, we will use the passive voice. We also use it for, um, for making bad news less harsh. Okay? So, for example... People say, oh, you're fired, or you're being released from a company. I'm sorry, but you're, you're losing your job. You're being laid off. The company, the boss does not come out and say, hey, I am firing you. No, the boss isn't proud of this. So the boss makes the recipient of the firing, the employee, the subject. You are being released. Or imagine if you have a cat. Imagine you have a cat. Here we can make bad news less harsh or spread also spreading responsibility um you have a cat and your cat is running across the road and i'm driving my car and i hit your cat i'm sorry but i hit your cat so i go to the door and knock 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 uh hey excuse me your cat was hit by a car right i could say hey i killed your cat i hit your cat but no no your cat was hit by a car. Now, it wouldn't be... Well, it's, I, I don't know if it, you want to call that being dishonest, but I'm, I'm not openly stating... You know, it, it, it is true, but I'm not openly stating that I was responsible for the death of your cat. But in cases like this, it, it allows you to convey the information from a different angle, which is very often a powerful tool. Okay, so remember, what we're doing is we're changing the structure of the sentence so that the subject receives the action. And we do this by using the verb to be and always conjugating the tense. Conjugating the verb to be. So, so uh, it is, if we say, someone is fixing it now. Someone is fixing it now. Or John is fixing it now. This is... This is present continuous. This is the active voice. John is fixing it now. Now, in the passive voice, we're still going to use present continuous, but we're going to put the tense onto the verb to be. So it is being, and then the, the main verb goes to the participle. It is being fixed right now. I'm not going to emphasize John. So the, imagine the boss, the boss, well... The boss doesn't have to know who's fixing it. We're we tell the boss, hey, sir, it's being fixed. The boss doesn't care if John fixes it or Ron fixes it or Susan fixes it. The boss just wants to know that the problem is being solved. The computer or whatever is being fixed. So we say, it's being fixed. Okay, let's try a few examples. I'll give you an active voice sentence and you convert it to the passive. The boy is beating the champion. Now we want to talk about the champion so we can say, the champion is being beaten. Someone is passing the leader. The leader is being passed. A taxi driver took the boy to the hospital. 
the boy was taken to the hospital in the past. The boy was taken. The insurance company reimbursed us. We were reimbursed. We were reimbursed. Or you could say by the insurance company. We broke the record. The record was broken. Hmm. The union is calling the strike, or the union is calling a strike. A strike is being called. A strike is being called. All right, very good. Let's move on now and take a look at our vocabulary of the day. Vocabulary of the day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the vocabulary of the day, our five words of vocabulary. The first word today, a diferencia de. This is unlike. Unlike. Yes. Unlike my parents, I live in Spain. Al revés. Al revés. Posición invertida. We say upside down, like boca abajo. Upside down. The opposite is right side up. Mm -hmm. Bastón. This is a walking stick. A walking stick. Apreciado por todos. Well liked. He is very well liked. Everybody likes him. He's well liked. Well liked. Bien planificado. Otra vez con well. Well planned. That was a well planned party. Everything went well. Everyone really enjoyed it. It was well planned. Well planned. All right, now let's move on to our very last structure where we're looking at the structure here. So do I. Yo también. Yo tampoco. Neither do I. So, so, if some, we have something in common, these are three word responses. We have something in common. If it's affirmative, we use so. If it's negative, we use neither. And then auxiliary verb, and then subject. For example, I am Canadian. And my brother? Oh, so is he. I don't speak German. And you? Neither do I. And your brother? Neither does he. I live in Spain. And you? So do I. And the king of Spain? So does he. I don't live in China. And you? Neither do I. I don't work in Australia. And you? Neither do I. And Fitz? Neither does he. And Alberto Alonso? Neither does he. And Leila? Neither does she. Leila lives in Spain. And Richard? So does he. I don't sleep in an igloo. Again with the igloo. I don't sleep in an igloo. And you? Neither do I. And David Waddell? Neither does he. I don't work in a circus. And Hannah? Neither does she. I don't play professional football. And you? Neither do I. All right? We're out of time, ladies and gentlemen. We are all out of time, so I have to stop now. But these uh, short answers are interesting, kind of fun to practice as well. You have an explanation there in your student guide, but we'll come back to that tomorrow for a little review before moving on to new material. So I do hope you'll join me. We just have three classes left, so keep listening, keep studying, keep working hard. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.